Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So, um, we are continuing uh, work on the Rockwell Delta 11 inch lathe. Um, so, the step was the shear pin broke off the, uh, the lead screw, and uh, we wanted to replace that. And uh, as I explained in my previous video, I could not get the collar off the lead screw to uh, get it to go through the um, the apron so I decided to take the apron off and since now since I have the apron off I've decided to pull the carriage off uh, I have a couple of oilers that are were damaged and I wanted to change them and I also wanted to just get underneath the uh, the carriage here and see what kind of condition it was um, you know, obviously there's not much I could do about the condition, but I wanted to see uh, if there was any chips in there. I wanted to clean the chips out, um, you know, have a look at everything. And, of course, I wanted to replace the oilers. Uh, I apologize for being on the cell phone. I know it's a little jittery, but this is all I have for now. Um, I'm working on a new camera for, the, uh, for taking the videos, so we're going to progress with that. So, uh, to follow up. Uh, we had a couple of brackets that I found in the apron and I really didn't know what they were here they are and they were just laying in the apron uh, not attached to anything very strange and then now when I pulled the carriage off I found this bracket and that well, I didn't find it, but that was attached uh, to to the carriage. It's the carriage stop. So I don't know if someone made these and made a couple extra ones and how they got in there. You can kind of see that this this uh, the one that was actually functioning is uh, kind of ground down. It's not square on this side. So I, I'm not sure if they just did that to make it fit, but I guess that solves at least what these pieces are not why the pieces are but what they are so um have some spares don't know that i'll ever need them but they might be good for somebody who lost them or don't have them to begin with now let's have a look at the oilers these are the three oilers that were on the carriage uh two of them looked okay from the top the bowl and the spring was still there, but look at look at all the crud in there. Look how bad that is. So I'm saying if you if you kind of use your oil can, you press the bowl down, you put some oil in there. Most likely, you're going to pump some chips right onto your ways, um, which to me is is not a good thing at all. Uh, I'm I wasn't very excited about that. So, uh, like I said, I could go ahead and clean these because they do look get usable. Uh, this third one here is, does not look usable. I don't know if the bowl is still in there. It's pushed down or what. But but I went ahead and I ordered a bunch from McMaster. Uh, I should have them tomorrow. So I'm going to just wait wait on that and put these back together. With new oilers. Uh, you know, at this point, uh, I'm not going to paint the lathe. I cleaned it up. So... I mean, I kind of feel like once you once you knock these out, they're not going to be the same because, you know, you're taking a punch and hitting it in there somewhere. You really can't see what you're doing. So it pays to have extras. They're only a couple bucks each, so I'll have a bunch of them. And I'll have them for my other uh, Delta Rockwell 11-inch lathe. And um, so that's, that's a plus. Now, um, as far as the carriage is concerned... This is about the way it came off. Um, I got some crap off of it. Just about most of the crap was paint that got under there, kind of, you know, like this. That was stuck under there. Um, and, you know, there was some, some crud in this area here. Uh, there was some crud in this area here. And, you know, when I, when I put this back on, I wanted to, I wanted to be flat against the mating surface so I just figured I'd wipe it down but there wasn't a lot of dirt I was very surprised uh, you know it looks pretty good it looks clean there's some rust you know a little surface rust in there but uh, everything looks kind of nice 
I'm going to go ahead and wipe it down a few more times and I'm probably going to clean out these cavities real good where the oilers were. Um, and now I'm going to bring you over to the lathe real fast. Okay, here we are at the lathe bed. I mean, the lathe bed is uh, far from perfect. Um, I might clean it a little bit, but the main thing was to, to clean all the dirt and get all the chips out. Um, make sure everything is nice on the, you know, it's, it's usable. I mean, I, I guess I might be a little bit anal with condition of stuff. I want everything to be uh, right and proper. I don't want to cause any damage to the lathe by just using it. Um, I have the, the lead screw is uh, soaking. I made a tube up, glued a cap on the bottom. I've done that for a couple of, you know, even my bridge port stuff. Take this bigger one, I got a cap on the bottom, I glue it on. And now I put the put the lead screw in there and I fill this up with uh, with purple power. So it's gonna soak it in there. I'm gonna pull it out a couple times. I'm gonna take a wire brush, uh, a brass wire brush, nice and soft, just to clean it and uh, when I put it back together, she should be nice and nice and clean. So uh, I'm gonna leave that for for this moment with you guys, and uh, I'm gonna come bring you guys back when I have the lead screw cleaned up, and uh, we'll we'll have a look at that and see what kind of condition that's. All right, guys. So we we pull the lead screw out of the purple power. You can kind of see she's pretty slopped up. Uh, whoever did this fantastic paint job on this lathe, you got paint over everything. And I think by looking at it, it looks like this paint is ready to blister off. So I'm gonna hit it with that uh, with that wire wheel. Matter of fact, I might just take it with the hose first and hose it off with a little pressure so we can blow most of the crap off of there. And then we're gonna hit it with that, uh, that brass wire wheel. Uh, to get them to, you know the rest of the junk off of it uh, and then of course we're gonna oil it up and reinstall it you can uh, you can see where the uh, the pin was and I have I have a bunch of uh, brass stock so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make a new shear pin I might make a few of them so I have them for spare measure it once and I'll cut cut a bunch of them I'm sure it'll cut real easy, so it won't be uh, nothing but cutting it with a, with, a, say, with a small set of pliers. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna clean this up, and I'm gonna bring you back. All right, guys, so uh, just to give you a quick look-see, uh, much improved. I, went, I just went and hosed this off with some water, and uh, the majority of the crap came off. There's, there's, there was still some crud, you can see where the, the paint was. So I took my brass wire brush and I kind of wire brushed as much of the paint off as I could. And uh, you can see where there's no paint, she's uh, sparkling clean. I'm in no rush to reinstall this because I'm waiting for the oilers. Uh, and you know, uh, most of my time is gonna be spent at work this week. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick this back in the purple power. Maybe I'll do a little more brushing here on the, on the paint and uh, let it go for a little bit more time and, and then I might go ahead and flip it over because this section here is not even really getting uh, in the purple power because my tube is not long enough so um, I might flip it upside down. I might do this a couple times just to clean up. It is, it is greatly improved. Uh, it looks pretty spectacular so we're going to get it as cleaned up as we can and then we're going to go ahead and reinstall everything. But you can still see there's some paint in there. I might actually uh, hit that with a pick just to get that out because the wire brush wasn't really hitting it inside there. All right, guys, I'm gonna bring you back when this is all cleaned up. Okay, guys, so I want to bring you back in. Um, I went ahead and WD-40 the entire lathe bed, and uh, I used super fine Scotch Bright Brad Jacobs trick. I went ahead and took all this apart, cleaned it all underneath. That's all cleaned, uh, you know, the ways. And I went ahead and I cleaned out 
these holes that go down to the uh, ways for the oilers. They were also uh, very crudded up. This one here, uh, I cleaned this one out also. This one goes to, uh, actually goes down inside the apron. So we're going to see what that one does. But uh, she's cleaned. Uh, I'm waiting for my oilers. I should be getting those uh, by tomorrow, hopefully. I'm letting my lead screw soak. And uh, once I get the lead screw done, I'm going to go ahead and uh, reassemble this and get back to my tailstock project. But I just wanted to get you guys uh, up to speed. It's uh, super clean now. Bed's not perfect, near perfect, but uh, it's uh, doesn't it has more dings in it than wear, so that's that's probably a good thing. Everything's nice and smooth. Carriage slides excellently. Um, got it all lubed up. Put whey oil on everything. So now it's just a matter of uh, waiting for the parts and doing some reassembly. And uh, then I'll get you back when I'm doing my tailstock uh, micrometer wheel. All right, guys. Thanks. All right, guys. Sorry for all the mess here, but we have the lead screw reinstalled in the apron. And we're ready to attach it or reattach it back to the lathe. One thing I want to say is... Uh, I tried oiling, I tried putting oil in here for the, uh, for this, the sump as you call it, and uh, it, it did go in, it was, you know, it was kind of a, it was kind of a mess, but what I'm going to do is, <clears throat> I'm going to try to get you around here, I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, I'm going to try to manually fill this uh, this sump up with some oil you can tell I can't even find it looking at it but uh, I can see I got a little oil in there but I'm gonna try to manually fill it before I install it that way uh, at least I know there's some oil in there yeah it's, it's kind of sh it's really shadowy I'm gonna try to tip it with my uh, even if I tip it I can't get in there I can't really hold it and hold the cell phone at the same time but but that's what we're gonna do we're gonna try to get way down there and, and fill that up with uh, with some oil and then I'm gonna assemble it on the lathe and then I'm gonna bring you guys back all right guys so we got the carriage uh, and the apron back together uh, except for the oilers I did get them, but I forgot to uh, I forgot to bring them today to the workshop. They came to my office, so uh, we're gonna have to put them on tomorrow. Uh, we got the elite screw all cleaned up, and uh, here is our brass shear pin. We cut it. I'm gonna go ahead and tap it in there. And then this, this retaining collar covers it and adjusts end play. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I was able to fill up the, uh, the sump with oil. I don't know if it's going to leak out or not. I don't see anything leaking now, but it's still early. I'm going to go ahead and put the tray under there. Um, I have this all set. It's nice and positive now. I have to really press it to get it to go the other way and vice versa. Have the uh, the threading uh, screw that's all adjusted properly. I'm not sure if my oiler is going to fit in there. I did pre-oil that uh, when I was putting things together, but if not, I'm going to find a new oiler. And I do have the back ends cleaned up. I pre-oiled that. I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, well, that's some more once I get it together, and uh, we are just about ready to go again. So we can get back to work on our other projects. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and I got to find some screws for this too. I don't even know where they went, 
But I'm gonna go ahead and get this back together. The shear pin, I'm gonna get it all fired up, see if it works. And then I'm gonna bring you guys back and uh, we can carry on. Thanks guys. All right guys, we're back at the lathe. So uh, everything assembled. I have the shear pin knocked in. I have the collar, the adjusting collar put on. Uh, I want to try to make a cut. I'm not going to do that with uh, without the oilers. So I put a couple of big magnets over the oil holes so no dirt would fall down there. Uh, I went ahead and installed the uh, you call the um, the support, and I pre-oiled it, but I just shot a little bit more oil in there just for good measure. Tell you what, that uh, purple power took the paint right off of that. That uh, green clown paint as I call it so I'm gonna take uh, I have a brush here I'm gonna put some oil on I'm gonna brush the lead screw up so it doesn't rust everything's nice and clean now I expect everything to be working properly um, still got a little green paint in there I've been trying to get it out but it's just uh, being stubborn it doesn't want to come out <clears throat> so I'm gonna uh, I guess I'm gonna finish up putting the tool on, put, you know, getting the tool uh, post prepared. And uh, I am gonna make my first cut and I'll bring you back when I'm making a cut so you can see some chips fly. Uh, all in all, I hope this project is over for the moment and uh, looks to me like everything should hopefully be a go. Thanks guys. Hey guys, so uh, we're back at the Rockwell 11. We've uh, made some progress. Well, I've made some progress. Um, as far as uh, cleaning, as far as uh, putting the lathe back together. I actually been doing, doing some uh, work on the lathe as well. But um, so I was missing a couple screws for the cross feed right here. And we found a few and uh, we matched them up with our other rock roll so we knew we know what size they are and, and uh, threads and length and such. Um, and even the uh, lock washers we found. So that's pretty well set. Uh, if you could see, I've installed the new oilers. Uh, I was able to pick them up at McMaster. Um, I got three of them in there. They. Uh, the old ones came out perfectly. The new ones just tapped right in with a soft piece of uh, brass knocker. There's some uh, some brass that I've been hitting things around with, uh, and uh, the lathe is working nice and good. It's it's nice and smooth. I'm not having any issues with it. Knock wood. It seems to be functioning properly. Uh, so I'm I'm happy with it. Uh, you know, I'm just going to do the maintenance as I go with it. Um, I guess, you know, the more things that I find with it, the more things I'm going to address. Uh, other than that, you know, the ways everything's nice and clean. The lathe is, is easily fully usable right now. Um, so, uh, again, I, ha I had a little issue. I took the, uh, the carriage and the apron off in the earlier part of this video and... Uh, I had quite a bit of problems with the uh, which is stuff being assembled wrong from the previous owner. Um, as you knew, I went in and fixed the shear pin, and I had a piece of uh, uh, I think it was a bronze rod that I had bought from McMaster a while ago, just just for this purpose. So I was able to uh, cut that, install that, adjust the uh, the lead screw, so everything was set properly. Uh, this all, all this, this uh, came about because uh, I needed to make that tailstock piece for the other tailstock I had. That's coming along nicely. As you can see, that part is actually laying in the uh, in the tray. Uh, it's just about finished. I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. That's part of another video that I'm doing, uh, building that. But uh, I, I think the only thing that I don't really like about this lathe from, from the mo minor use that I've had from it, and I don't think it's particular to this lathe, but I don't like the travel of the tailstock. I have to say that it doesn't seem like that I have that much travel at all when I'm trying to do drilling. I, I feel like I'm constantly uh, moving. I'm constantly moving the actual tailstock back and forth because 
And if I want to drill a hole, it doesn't have that much travel. Uh, I did notice that uh, Stefan Gottswinter, he, uh, he did a mod to his uh, tailstock. And uh, he, has, he has like a extended length where he, he can use a, a lever arm and kind of uh, uh, pull it back and forth and get quite a bit more travel. That's some, maybe something I want to address in the future. Um, but again, that's uh, other than that, the lathe is working really, really well. I'm really happy with it. Uh, and um, and I guess that's about it. Uh, the one thing I did I did have issues with was uh, I did notice that this locking locking the uh, the carriage in for feeding. If this wasn't adjusted right, I guess this is this is the half nut control. If this wasn't adjusted right. I could not get this to uh, to work. It it kind of froze, and I guess it has to do with the safety that interlock that will not allow you to to have this in in here and this feeding the the uh, cross slide. But uh, but again, that was uh, that was good. Everything was good. So um, thanks for watching this video. Um, I hope you guys are making some progress in your shop and. Uh, Please subscribe and follow. Um, I'm in the middle of making a bunch more videos. i got a lot of things going on at the workshop. Uh, a lot of stuff that I've purchased that needs a little work. And just projects. Um, so uh, I guess I'll see you guys soon. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.